Hey, I'm Lucas, this is Lucas is Busy. I'm gonna do things a little bit different today. Instead of trying to do the voiceover at the start or any of the other stuff I'm done, I'm gonna try and explain how we got to where we are because right now I feel like nobody really knows how we got to where we are. So I'm gonna change it up right now. First, first, uh, we're gonna need a different lens. Oh yeah, oh. Oh my goodness, look how bright this is. Well, yeah, see, so like, just a little, little bit of sound conditioning and stuff there. And uh, this thing I made, and I like sit next to my computer and my, my monstrous, you know, monitor set. You know, there's nothing fancy back here. This, I made all this, a gajillion lights. This is my office in here. Like, I mean, this is just, I do it all in this one room, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're gonna go outside. Oh, problem though. I'm gonna have to boop you out because you haven't seen the lift. So I've been asked several times why the CNC mill. This thing will carve whatever I want out of metal or any other material you can think of. Titanium, stainless steel, aluminum, wood. The next round of my iterations would have cost upwards of $20,000. And you know how those things grow very, very quickly. So what I decided early on was that instead of investing in someone else's bottom line, what I'm gonna do is invest in myself by kitting out my shop more with better tools, more tools, clearly more expensive tools, produce these things myself and do this next iteration of prototypes myself. Yes, big giant tool for big giant ideas. This first one's smaller, but I wanna move into engine block later on and for that kind of thing you need the height yeah it's pretty high so I'll get a I'll get a block in there in a bit to get all the way down mmm I can't imagine more rigidity when boring out cylinders basically my device combines these turbos into one this is a turbo off of a seven liter diesel truck motor and this is off of a two liter motor just like this one actually this one just not this one this one <laughs> Cause I, I, this one, I built this one and it blew up the other one. Why that's good is because by combining these turbos into one, you can make a much larger turbo spool much, much quicker, which means you can shrink down the overall size of the motor and still maintain the drivability of the motor. For me, I just want to go really fast, but I'm not blind to the benefits of this device. I'm going to move forward with trying to develop it and patent it. But the next step is the second round of iterations. This is the 4G63 motor, arguably one of the strongest and most potent two liter four banger motors ever created. Steel block, aluminum head, this particular one is built to take 10,000 RPM and about 45 or 44 pounds of boost. I've only had it up to 33 pounds so far. Um, haven't dynoed it yet just still messing around with the tune and everything. Um, oil everywhere because welding on this did micro cracks everywhere. It's also half torn apart because I had a bad tank of fuel last year. So I'm still chasing that demon. Also I have a cracked manifold. That's an issue. When you're pushing those, those boost levels, you really find the little cracks in the armor really quickly. Eh? So a lot to do here. We got to get the hoss inside. We got to get the hoss down first. Um, this is all, this is all coming, um, but yeah, let's get to her. So why even do this at all? At a really high level, I guess it's because I have a dream to make products that solve problems we have and I sense the shift in the way traditional ideas are brought forward and the way business is done. The shift I see happening is that people are putting their craft or trade up online and the internet is responding by forging lasting relationships between creators and buyers. That has always been there. The real shift I see, however, is that people are searching out these bonds because both sides are tired of being abused. It's refreshing for them to have a face to connect with for once, a real person who you can trust. And because of that, honest, hardworking and authentic creators are starting to flourish. But where this really all started was because of one idea that I had about 10 years ago. It came to me in the middle of a math class like a little bolt of lightning. 
My idea is a novel new turbocharger design. Immediately, I knew my idea would yield the fruit that so many had sought. A giant turbo with unchoked top end flow that would respond and spool up just like one several sizes smaller. I sat in my university library in the engineering reference section and in between classes for days I sat and looked at everything. I was now certain what I had come up with was not there. I then poured over about 500 patents reaching back to the 1800s. I pulled patents that even remotely mentioned turbos or devices that used a method that was similar to mine. For weeks on end, I ground away until I made it through the list. I did not find anything. Encouraged by those two facts, I decided to move forward. Uh, yeah, so Haas day four. Day four, Haas drop, day four, Haas drop, day four. We got the legs done. We got all the wood cut, all of it. We got our six by sixes, the other six by sixes, the legs anchored down, welded out, ready to go. It's leveled. So, <clears throat> basically we're ready. <clears throat> we took care of all the wood yesterday, so today it's time to drop this bitch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know it's been uh it's been a bit of a journey. I'll tell you that. You know with the flu and getting stuck in the garage. Ugh, man the ice fucked that up. Oh who are these hosers? Look at this guy! Hi guys! They are so pumped up today and it is driving me nuts! Man, I am so pumped for the Haas to be on the ground. Next step will be lifting the garage. So that's pretty huge. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work. As you can see, lots of stuff has been uh, taken out. So basically what's gonna happen today, is we're gonna jack her up. We'll be putting the weight on the legs. Yeah. So the first thing I need to do here is get the chains off. These boomers are on there so tight because of the way I tension everything yesterday. I wasn't really kind of paying attention and then today I had a real tough time getting that one uh, safety clasp off. So what I do first is I use the jack to press down on the trailer so I can get the last bit of blocking out from underneath the beams. Once I get that last bit of blocking out, you can see I let the jack go and you can see the trailer rise up drastically as the weight is relieved from it. After I get it off though, you can really see the tires unloading. Like watch right here. Yeah, see? Oh, that's the kind of weight. All right, big moment. Off the trailer. Oh man. But wait, there's more. Oh, on the legs. The old giant beams are holding that 12,000 pounds. Woo! Man, I'm pumped now. Here we go.
Ha 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 ha, trailer is free. Who got a new lens? Mmm! Little nifty 50? Uh, 1.8 I think? That 1.8 makes for some nice bokeh. This is my first stab at it and I was super happy with how it came out, but I was way more excited to get the machine down so I don't have a whole ton of it. Um, this is about all I could scrape out of it. Now it's time to get this machine off of those spindly little legs. Hey, if you were just watching this for the first time, I did all the math on the legs and the beams, so I know that they are gonna hold this weight. Spoiler? I don't know if that's a spoiler, that's just smart, really. First thing I need to do though, is level the stack of dunnage underneath of it so everything sits level with the earth, I guess. Uh, I just use little pieces of two by four and a regular old level and a crowbar. Just gotta lift uh, up the stack once I had kinda had going and level it all. <clears throat> all right, dunnage back in. Looking uh, pretty secure, I'd say. Uh, got the wood unloaded. Man, this won't even be that bad to drop. I was like super worried and now it's looking deadly. All right, drop the trailer off and then boom! Boom, boom, boom! We'll drop it! All right, time to get these legs out. First thing I do is go around and make sure all the blocking is really straight and perfectly perpendicular with itself and centered under the legs. Then I go around one more time just to make sure because I was super nervous. Then what I did is I put a piece of blocking under the dunnage and took the weight off the legs. Once the weight was off them, I could unbolt them from the concrete and pull them out. Uh, process was super easy. Super, super stoked. It all came apart. So, so good. Oh, look at this. Oh, where did the legs go? Where did the legs go? They're gone, bitch. Dubla legs. Dubla. Oh, I'm fucking a helicopter. What do you mean a helicopter? I think you're so fancy. Now that the legs are out, it's time to take that dunnage out piece by piece and get this thing to the ground. How I'm gonna do that is I take the jacket about 90% extension. I lift it up that last little 10%. That takes the weight off the blocking. I take out as much blocking as I can, at which point I release the jack to about the 10% point. That last 10%, I shim it so I just take the weight off the jack and then I extend the jack back to 90% and repeat the process all over, back and forth, back and forth until it's on the floor. Still a lot more to come. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I still need to get it inside the building, but that building needs to be lifted up another four feet. Stay tuned.